Hello and welcome to part 4 in chapter 2. In this part we're going to work on adding some grass to our world using the foliage tool and creating a grass material. So I'm going to go into my content and go into my meshes and I'm going to import from my assets folder the grass mesh. One thing you want to make sure in this one is that you go to the mesh at the top, choose the down arrow for show advanced and you want to make sure the vertex color import is changed from ignored to replace. The reason why is because I've already built the asset to have vertex color on it and we want to make sure we import those vertex colors with the mesh. More on that be revealed later. And here is our grass mesh. Again, it will come with a Lambert 1, which we don't need. We can remove that. To continue, we're going to make a grass material. So go to your materials and make a new material called grass mat. And in here, we're going to set up a color. So hold down the 3 key, left click, plug in your base color, and we choose a green color. Click apply and we can close that. Go back to your meshes, open up the grass mesh and choose the mesh that you want, uh, the material rather that you want to show on your mesh. And there we have it. Now to make grass effective, we want to see it from both sides. So we've got from this side, but we want to see it from the other side too. That's because by default, planes, which is what this shape is, are flat and only rendered on one side. To change that, open up your material. A shortcut to that is we can double click on this thumbnail here. Select your results node, the big brown one in the middle, and go to the right hand side, left hand side, sorry, for your details panel. And you'll see an option for two sided. Tick that on and click apply. You can then go back to your grass mesh and you should see it appear on both sides of the material, of the mesh rather. We'll close that. And now we're going to place this grass into our level. Now rather than place it one by one, like so, it, that will get very tedious and very long. So what we're going to do instead is use the foliage tool. Up the top left you'll see the little plant icon, that's your foliage tool. Click on this and you'll see an option for saying drop foliage here. So grab your grass mesh and drab it, drop it into that area. Now it's a bit cramped, but click on this and you'll see various options available to you. Now what the foliage tool will do is wherever I paint on my level, it will sort of randomize and place uh, foliage of this type. So I've got my grass selected here. I could choose the density, the radius and the scaling. And this will be the randomization of it. So my minimum is going to be 0.5 and the maximum is going to be 1.5. I'm going to change my brush size at the top, so this is quite a big circle here. I'm going to change that down to 110, I think that's quite good. And so I'm just going to paint where I want my grass to appear. And it will randomize the size, rotation, and placement of my grass. And I'm just going to place it around my level to make it feel a bit more worn in, a bit overgrown, like so. Now if you don't like the placement of a certain one, you can hold down shift and click and it will delete whatever you paint over. So you want to go through the whole entire level, adding your grass. I'm going to fast forward this bit, so you don't have to watch me click through the whole entire level. Okay, now my grass is my level. I can push play and I can see all that grass in my world. Now it's okay, but it's a bit static. I think it would be better if it waved around a little bit like grass does. So what we're going to do is go into our grass material and make it wave around a little bit. Open up your grass material, 
And one of the options you'll see is world position offset. Now this is what this does, it takes the vertices of the model that the material is applied to and moves them. So what we're going to be using is a node called simple grass wind. And what we do is multiply that by the vertex color. In the previous episode, and what we do is multiply it by the vertex color of the mesh. So right click and add the vertex color input. We can drag it that out from the top one there and go multiply by the result. And that'll go into a world position offset. Now a simple grass wind needs some values. It is wind intensity, wind weight, and additional WPO. The wind intensity and wind weight are two single constants. And the additional WPO, or one position offset, is a three vector. You can tell which one it needs by the brackets here. S is for scalar, which is what these are, and V3 is a three vector. Now, if you're able to see this in action, we're going to make this show the grass mesh in this preview me mo uh, model here. To do that, we're going to go into our mesh folder, have it selected, then go into here and click the little teapot. And it will change the view to your grass. So to add wind to this, we need to change these two values here to get what we want. So let's change the wind intensity up. So I'm going to change that to 0.5 and the wind weight to also 0.5. Let's see what happens there. And you can see a bit of waving of the mesh. Now the vertex color, the way this works is that it's only affecting the bit that I've painted white. To show you this, I can go to my mesh and at the top I've got an option for vert colors. And here you can see what I've painted in. I've painted in the tops of my grass white the bottoms black so the black parts aren't multiplied they're zeros basically and so the zeros are going to make it not move not affect the simple grass wind whereas the top parts are white and therefore are going to be affected by the simple grass wind and that's how you get that effect we can click apply and let's go back into our world to see how that looks may need to wait for the shaders to compile but when they do, the world should seem a bit more dynamic and a bit more alive. And there you have it. And that'll do for this part. For the next part, we're going to add uh, a bit more flavour to our ma uh, map by adding damaged walls and uh, some rubble and some bricks to decorate the scene a little bit more. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laney. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.